I honestly don't know what to say about Monday Night Raw. And some of you may be wondering about what am I doing out in the kitchen? Well, my brother and his wife are not here. They've gone out for a while. Well, my brother's gone to work. And his wife is going to take him to work. So, I've taken it upon myself just to pack my things, come out here for a bit, talk about Monday Night Raw, because I don't want to be trapped in that little room. Trust me, it's very uncomfortable in that room. Trust me. I'm not going to complain too much about it, but damn, it's very uncomfortable in there. Very sweaty. And if you guys see me in my reviews, I move around. Like, it's hard for me to sit still. Me actually being out here, sitting down, resting my laptop on a table. You know, it, it, it's so much refreshing. So we're here to talk about Monday Night Paw. And this is the brand that 6 owed SmackDown Live. This is the brand that 6 owed SmackDown Live. This is the show that 6 owed SmackDown Live. The, sh the, the, the show is garbage. Seriously, how could anyone sit there and enjoy this? I didn't enjoy anything on, on, on Raw. It was absolutely boring. There was nothing to it. Sure, they added a stipulation with Braun Strowman's match, which is probably the only match that has meaning. Apart from that, there was really nothing else. We had we had multiple women's matches. Three. We had three women's matches. We had a. We had quite a few tag team matches. We had multiple tag team matches. Basically, this whole show was filled off of, of uh, tag team matches. There was only one singles match this entire show. And that was Natalia versus Ruby Riot. Every other match... Oh, I, oh, and Ronda Rousey versus Mickey James. That was another one-on-one -on -one match. Two one-on-one -on -one matches. Three women's matches. The first women's match was a tag team match. The opening match was a tag team match. Then we had another tag team match with the Lucha House Party. And then we had another tag team match with, with Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. How is this show enjoyable in any way? I don't get it. This show is just terrible. This was the brand that 6 owed SmackDown. Just remember that, guys. This was the brand that 6 owed SmackDown. This is just ridiculous. The show started off with Baron Corbin bragging about Raw 6 owing, which really it should have been 6 1. Realistically, it should be 6 and 1. But Mr. WWE, Mr. Vince McMahon, doesn't count the pre-show. Well, then, there was no reason for that 10-man tag that you decided to throw in there for Raw vs. SmackDown, man. There was no reason for that match to exist if you are going to do that. So we started off the show with Baron Corbin. He uh, bragged, like I said, he was bragging about how Raw 6 owed SmackDown. Stephanie McMahon was in a good mood. So she decided to give Braun Strowman what he wanted, and that's his uh, rematch with Bron Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. But she did throw in two stipulations. Baron Corbin has to defeat Braun Strowman. If Baron Corbin does not defeat Braun Strowman, then he will be, then he will be done as acting general manager of Monday Night Raw. But if Braun Strowman doesn't beat Baron Corbin, <clears throat> excuse me, random burp, then Braun Strowman will lose 
his rematch at the Royal Rumble 2019 next year. So, then Stephen McMahon goes ahead and books a six-man tag. Well, Baron Corbin first uh, in, does a handicap match with Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley, but then Stephen McMahon counters that, and she decides to book a six-man tag. Braun, Finn, and Elias versus Drew, Bobby Lashley, and Baron Corbin. I didn't care for this match. This Drew McIntyre, he still he looks great as always, you know. I see big plan I can definitely see big plans for this guy. You know what? I'm gonna make an early Royal Rumble prediction, ladies and gentlemen. I predict Drew McIntyre to win the Royal Rumble and go on to WrestleMania and win the Universal Championship. That is my early Royal Rumble prediction. This six-man tag team match ends in no contest because Drew, Bobby, and Corbin all beat up Braun three-on-one. Elias and Finn Balor were eliminated, and and then they played up a storyline where Braun Strowman suffered an injury to his uh, shoulder or arm, whichever one it is. Then we move on to... Naya Trash and Trash Mina versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. I think this is actually the first time this year Sasha and Bailey have actually versed someone other than the Rife Squad. I think this is the first time in history in 2018 Sasha and Bailey are not versing the Rife Squad. And what a surprise. They lose. All because they want to continue building Naya Jax up. Sure, I understand they need to build her up to look strong against Ronda Rousey. But I, I find it funny that the people, the people talk about the main streamers. And this is what I went on about in Survive, on my Survivor Series review. Everyone talks about how WWE always favors the mainstream. The main streamers are the baby faces. They get all the attention. They get everything. Yeah, that is theoretically true. They do. But the funny thing about all this is that ever since people started trashing down the mainstreamers, they've been turning heel. Naya, Bliss, uh, now you've got Charlotte, who's just recently turned. Yeah, so much for the mainstreamers always being baby faces. Yeah, so much for the mainstreamers being baby faces, guys. I think that's one. I think you guys are starting to eat your words about the mainstream is always being baby faces. But Tamina and Nia get the victory, at, of course, over Sasha and Bailey. So I didn't care. Sasha Banks and Bailey need to get off of Raw. They really need a move over to SmackDown Live. They do. They really need a trip over to SmackDown Live. I'm getting tired of these two on Raw. They really need a trip over to the blue brand. The Lucha House Party. The Lucha House Party. Take on the Revival in Lucha House Party Rules, where apparently all three members are allowed to compete in the match. Technically, you are saying it's a three-on-one handicap match. So, oh my god, this is just stupid. Absolutely stupid. How can you be okay with these stupid rules? Then why isn't the New Day allowed to do this why isn't the new day why isn't there a new day rule where the new day are allowed to be in there three on three on two how come the new day don't get this how come other factions don't get this seriously this is stupid absolutely stupid the lucha house party win 
poor, poor revival getting buried once again after putting on a hell of a match with the Usos at Survivor Series. So stupid. The Lucha House Party get the victory. Ronda Rousey wanted an open challenge. Now, of course, now apparently to my friend, one open challenge means you are the best champion in the world. I mean, like, are you kidding me? Just, so, are you kidding me? You, just because you do an open challenge doesn't make you a great champion. Sure, I, res sure, I appreciate Ronda doing that. But the problem here is that you can't just say an open challenge makes Ronda Rousey a better champion than Becky Lynch. Seriously, that is what my friend said to me before I came on here and did this review. I'm like, are you kidding me? One open challenge and you think she's better than Becky Lynch? Becky Lynch would easily surpass Ronda Rousey as the best champion. Becky Lynch put on a hell of a match with Charlotte. At Evolution. You don't think that makes her a good champion? No, apparently doing open challenges makes you a good champion. Piss off. Absolutely stupid. This is how silly my friends are. That's how blinded they are. That is how blinded they are, guys. That's how blinded they are. Ronda Rousey does an open challenge. Who comes out? At first I thought this was very intriguing. And I was like, okay. Maybe they could surprise us. But at the same time, I was like, Nah, this is WWE. They would never surprise us. So out comes Mickey James. And Ronda Rousey easily beats Mickey James with three. I'm sorry. Piper's Pit. That's what she names her finish. That's that's the name. Of that spinning side slam she does. But on WWE 2K19, they call it the Rowdy Buster. Honestly, that sounds better! Rowdy Buster! That sounds like a better name than Piper's Pit. I don't care if it's her naming it after Roddy Piper and his Piper's Pit show. I don't care about that. Sure, people may think that's respectful. I think that's dumb. Absolutely dumb. Obviously, Ronda Rousey wins with an armbar to Mickey James. Drake Maverick throughout the show is being picked on for his whole pissing his pants moment at a Survivor Series. And then he uh, gets confronted by Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, as I, call, as I dub them as the Glorious Alpha. And um, and then and then Bobby Roode and Chad Gable have a match with the AOP, and the crowd started chanting, AOPP, 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 as in pissing his pants, P P P P, like you're taking a P. That P. P E E P. I found that really dumb. And and what and what's even more stupid? You build the you build the A O P P up and you build them up as a dominating P force and and a P lose. Sorry, I'm randomly throwing P in there because I just think it's I, I just think it's really stupid. I know I shouldn't be doing that, but AOPP that is so so stupid. Anyway, I'll, I, anyway, I'll say it properly. You build up the AOP as a dominant tag team, and you have AOP lose. Lose to Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Sure, this gives Bobby Roode and Chad Gable something to do. And yes, they could be potentially next tag team champions. 
Which, obviously, they won't. All the rumours of them breaking up is obviously not going to happen. So, the AOP and Drake Maverick, who peed his pants, were absolutely furious at this defeat. And, and that is basically, and that's basically that. Natalia takes on Ruby Riot in a in, in a boring women's match. I didn't care for this. Group Natalia is just Natalia. Ruby Riot's a fantastic wrestler. It's an absolute joke that WWE is holding back Ruby Riot. She has so much potential. Why did you move her from SmackDown? Honestly. That's, a, that's another thing I want to know. Why did you move Ruby Riot from SmackDown? She was doing great things on SmackDown. She could easily, if she was still on SmackDown, she would easily be women's champion. Easily. But no, you had to take another valuable wrestler from SmackDown just so then you can say, oh, we took another great talent who we're never going to use. And we're never going to make them women's champion. Like with Ember Moon, they're never going to make her champion. Seriously. Natalia wins by roll-up. Seems like this rivalry is not over. God help me. Throughout the night, Seth Rollins was trying to get his hands on um, Dean Ambrose, and I will say, and I will say that this was probably the only entertaining thing on the show. And then Dean Ambrose heads out to the ring, and then, uh, and as soon as Ambrose walks out to the ring. Seth Rollins, who said that he was leaving, all of a sudden comes back. All of a sudden appears and he runs back to the ring because he sees Ambrose in the ring. And they start fighting. And they start fighting and Ambrose gets the upper hand with a low blow. And, and then Dean Ambrose got the upper hand with two dirty deeds to Seth Rollins. And that's basically how Raw ended. That's basically how Raw ended. So if you guys did enjoy this review, hit that thumbs up. If you did, comment your opin opinions down below as well. Be sure to check out my previous videos. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. And be sure to follow me on my Twitter, at pballantine95 as well. And I'll see you all tomorrow for my SmackDown review. See you then.